spending cuts, printing money and exports have all failed to revive the world economy in the long term. We will find out how the global economy is doing right now and talk to Oliver Rakau from Deutsche Bank Research. Mr. Rakau, how has the DBX developed in November? The DBX has actually improved slightly uh, compared to the last month and actually when you look at how it has improved it has been a broad based improvement from all regions basically uh, except for Japan and uh, the DBX has increased to the best level since June 2011. Oh, very good news. So lately the World Trade Organization agreed on a global trade agreement. What effects will we see? Uh, that's very questionable um, when we will see these effects. In general, such trade agreements are uh, to be seen positive. Uh, they are um, better for allocating uh, labor and capital across the globe. And they should actually improve um, the export performance and global growth over time. But uh, since all these agreements still have to be uh, performed uh, into law in all these regions, um, we will see the positive effects only later on. Okay, so um, right now we see a very uh, positive US economy, we um, see growth rates in China. Which part of the world is more important for the European countries, for the Eurozone, what do you think? We have actually uh, done a research piece on that, um, focusing on the effects of the Chinese uh, growth and the US growth on German growth, but that should in general be uh, also uh, true for the European economy. And there we have to say that the US economy is still much more important for the European economy. That is uh, because of uh, tighter trade links, tighter financing links to the monetary system, um, as well as uh, more sentiment transmission between uh, those continents. Um, but even so, the uh, Chinese economy has become more important, especially for Germany, because China is one of the top five uh, exporting destinations for German exports. So if those both regions uh, improve, that should be uh, good for the European economy as well. What kind of problems do you see right now in um, countries like, for example, France or Italy, which are really quite weak at the moment? That is true. Um, I mean, uh, in Italy you have the problem that all those structural reforms that are necessary to bring back structural growth, uh, long-term growth, uh, are not done currently because uh, there are too many um, difficulties on a political level still. Um, you are much more focused on, on people, on how to govern instead of actually doing those reforms. Okay. Uh, our Italian economist uh, has uh, looked at what trend growth actually looks like in Italy currently and that's uh, pretty much stagnation. Uh, so the Italian uh, government really should focus uh, on reforms. In France it looks a bit uh, better, structurally it's uh, stronger currently, but even there you don't see that much reform drive as is necessary. Um, if you look at the president, uh, Hollande, um, he really is not focusing much on reforms yet mm -hmm. because he faces a very um, skeptical uh, public. Okay. In our special talk this month we will have a look on German politics, on the coalition treaty and on its um, effects on the economy, of course. Thank you so far, Mr. Rakau. Yeah. So what does the coalition treaty hold in store for Germany? What will it cost and what kind of effects will it have on the Eurozone? That's what you can find out on dw.de slash english slash made in Germany.